I'm Cornelia Donner, the former secondary school principal at Metropolitan School Frankfurt. Um, I've been asked to talk to you today a little bit about my career and it's um, from the perspective of someone who's retired and who's looking back at four decades in education. I need to tell you that I didn't start out thinking that I would go into education. I didn't think about it at all as a matter of fact. I majored in French and then later in German in college because languages were my passion. I had grown up bilingual. I had taken French in school since I was eight years old and I loved languages and no one could dissuade me. It uh, never occurred to me that you needed to make a career choice so I thought, oh, perhaps I'll be a translator, who knows. And then I spent the third year of my four years of college in Paris at the Sorbonne which only fueled my interest in French and in wanting to return to Paris as soon as possible. Uh, I returned to the United States to finish my bachelor's degree um, and then I decided I'd been a very studious person for 16 years and I decided that was enough school. I didn't want to go to graduate school right away, although I assumed I would return at some point. And I wanted a job and I wanted to do something practical and I wanted to be financially independent. I started looking around at jobs. I looked at everything from tea taster in Africa, which required French, to um, uh, working for the National Security Agency because they were looking for people with a facility with languages. And then I realized that most Americans don't have more than five days of vacation a year, at least when they're starting their careers. And so I uh, looked into teaching with long summer vacations because I had relatives in Germany whom I visited regularly and I just wasn't ready to give up that life of summer vacations. I applied to all of three schools I could think of. All of them were private schools because I was not certified to teach. And in the United States, independent schools don't require teaching certification. And so I began teaching French. Um, I loved it from the moment I stood in front of my first class. And this came as somewhat of a surprise because I didn't really want to be in teaching at all. In fact, um, I had become somewhat of a feminist and the idea of going into teaching was odd for me because finally, at the moment I entered teaching, women could do anything in male-dominated fields. Uh, in formerly male-dominated fields, and here I was going into teaching, which women had always been able to do. Um, but the reality was that I really liked it. Um, and I liked, uh, I liked the energy of the classroom, I liked being able to bring all my interests into the classroom. And I would say to you that there has never been a difference between my professional life and my personal life. All of my interests, cooking and photography and traveling and languages, could be brought into the classroom. And so I never felt as though uh, there were, that I was forcing myself to go to work. I loved what I did. I also loved um, making teaching fun for kids, making learning fun. Uh, I went to graduate school 12 years after I began teaching. And uh, one piece of advice I have for you is it will feel right when it's time to do something. Uh, the, way, the reason I went to graduate school was because I attended a panel discussion one night of a colleague of mine who had just moved to my city to work at the school. And she was quite, quite a forerunner for women because her husband and her two sons had moved with her, which was unheard of in that day. Um, anyway, she was speaking on a panel about change in one's life and I decided she needed to see a friendly face in the audience, so I went. And there was another panelist, a teacher from a neighboring school, who had spent a year, near, a year in New York um, at a program, uh, a sabbatical program for teachers at independent schools. And he made a statement that was, life is a parade and if you don't join it, it will pass you by. So I went home that night and thought of this quotation and I also thought about the fact that he had joined a program in New York that was completely funded by a wealthy philanthropist for, for independent school teachers to take a year off and reflect on their trade and also get a master's degree. Uh, the problem was this was Friday and the deadline was Monday, so I cleared off the dining room table and very quickly wrote an intellectual autobiography and a research proposal because you had to have a project that you were going to work on that day, that year, and I chose the integration of Asian languages into the American school system because I everyone was hopping on the, on the train of uh, teaching Chinese and Japanese in American schools when I knew that American students had difficulty learning French and Spanish, which are significantly 
uh, easier languages. So I went to graduate school for a year, and in the brochure for this program, it advertised that they were trying to make administrators out of so-called plain vanilla teachers. And I love teaching. I wanted to be their holdout. I did not want to go into administration. Um, and nothing was going to change me. Uh, coincidentally, during the spring of that year, my school in Baltimore, that was required to hold my position open while I was away that year, called and asked if I would head the middle school, and I declined. I was going to be a teacher. And two months later, they called back and said, well, we've done a search and we can't find anyone. Would you do it for a year? And I thought at that point, I owed them something. They had kept my position open. They had continued to pay a part of my salary. I would do this for them. And I got hooked, of course. By October of that school year, I saw my position advertised and thought, no, wait, that's my position. Um, I want to keep doing this. So one um, reflection I have on that is that sometimes when you try something and you take a step and you go out of your comfort zone, you discover something else that you might like to do. I'm a person who's very comfortable with doing something um, repeatedly and doing it well, and I didn't think I needed the challenge. But the minute I got into school administration, I realized, yes, this is something else that I like to do. In fact, it's something I even like to do better than teach because it's working with students and it's working within adult, with adults. And you have the power to influence a school well beyond the classroom. Uh, in, in your classroom, you teach your subject. But when you are the administrator of a school, I think you have a number of very important roles chief among them, you can set the tone for the school, which is very important, and you can select the teachers. And if you select the right teachers, as all of you know, then everything else follows. Then you have a happy and successful school. And so I did that for uh, quite a number of years and very much, again, enjoyed uh, having the challenge of something new. It's always hard in the beginning, but it's ultimately worth it to push yourself out of your comfort zone and to do something that you didn't think that you could do. After I'd been doing that for a number of years, my husband accepted a job in Germany. I say this only because when you make decisions for your life, later on in life, you may have a partner, you may have children, and so your options are not only your own, you need to take other people into consideration as well. And so my husband, who had always been a, a great supporter of mine, and uh, very respectful of my career, um, he deserved a chance to do what he really wanted to do too, so I moved to Germany with him. And with that came all sorts of new challenges because I had been at the same school, albeit in different roles, for two decades, and uh, suddenly I was having to reinvent myself in a completely different country, which may not seem so odd to you because right now, Students are much more mobile than they used to be, but for me, even growing up between Germany and the United States, and then later having spent a year in France, it was somewhat daunting to move to another country and establish myself there professionally. Uh, it was ultimately very worthwhile. I, I headed uh, schools in, Berlin, in two schools in Berlin at a time when the Berlin Wall had come down and, and private schools were popping up everywhere to serve the need of young families moving to the east who needed English as the fundamental language of instruction. I think that uh, working the first time in an international arena, also working for state subsidized schools requiring a lot of uh, contact with the Board of Education was very important for me. Um, first of all, to have to do it all in another language, I did most of my work in German, which was also a good challenge. Um, I very much enjoyed international education as um, really the way all children should be educated, with children of many, many different countries. Um, and I uh, would say that making this move was very important for me. Uh, starting new schools is a difficult process. It is a very turbulent process, and I had been at an established school for a long time. So it was also interesting for me to see which qualities I could bring to the job, what I had to change about myself. It involved a lot of flexibility. And as you all move into the job market, you will find that um, it's predicted now that people will change, stu the students of today will change their careers six times. That doesn't mean positions, that means careers, that you will actually be doing different things. I did a number of different things within the same field of education. I sometimes questioned whether I wanted to do something else, but always moved back to education. But as long as you change roles within the field, 
I think that you will, you will be well served and that you will find um, you will find that uh, you can keep going. You do you want to you don't you always want to make sure that you are happy and that you are challenged. Um, the piece of advice that uh, that you have probably gotten a million times from people is to do something you like and that you will then never work a day in your life. I would say it's not entirely true. Um, I've told you that my professional and my personal lives were very close together. There were certainly long nights and long weekends of work when I didn't really feel like doing that work. I loved the day-to-day -day of the school. I didn't always like all the paperwork that came with it. But if you do something that has meaning, you won't mind doing all of those things. You will eventually, you, you, you see that they have a purpose. The paperwork needs to get done well too. The teacher's recommendations, the student recommendations, all those, all those sorts of things. The school evaluations, while they may not be fun, they are all very important to do. Um, I also chose during my career as an administrator to have an open door at all times. And that was a personal choice that I made because I felt that the time of teachers and students and parents was very valuable and that I needed to be flexible to meet their needs, which meant that I took a lot of the paperwork home at night. But that's a personal choice and I think everyone can decide how they want to, how, how they want to handle those aspects of their work. Um, I would say looking back on my 40 years of, in, of uh, work in education, there's really nothing that I would change. Uh, I would say perhaps more change would have been better rather than less change, but at the time I was very happy and you can't go back and undo yourself and, uh, and say, oh, I should, I should make a change when that is your current self talking about your past self. But I can only say that I would wish everyone as many fruitful professional years as I have had. Thank you.